third time recording this video. Here is installing R in our studio and LaTeX to our class website, uh, our Canvas site. I'm going to come over to the modules to get the link to the Encyclopedia Volume Zero. This is for setting up the software that you're going to need for this class. So at the top, I'm going to click to open up the link in actually an external um, web browser tab. So first things first, we're going to download the programming language R. Again, this is the motor that we're installing in our computer, but we're never going to touch directly. So we're going to go to the r-project.com and we're going to click download R in the first paragraph. Select a CRAN mirror close to your geographical location. So we're in the United States. I'm going to pick Oregon this time instead of Washington University in St. Louis. But again, most of them in the United States are just somewhat close. Don't choose Pakistan or something. So I'm going to show you the, the links to click on for Windows. And while it's downloading, I'll come back and show you for Mac. So in Windows, you're going to click where it says Base. If you click the words install R for the first time, you go to the same place. And you're going to click the biggest letters, download R version 4.0.2. And it's going to download, and you can see I've done this a couple times today. I didn't have my recording set up correctly. But it's going to download for Windows an EXE ex ex executable file to start the the download or the installation process. If I go back a couple screens, if I was a Mac user, I would click on Mac operating system. If you have an old version of your operating system for Mac, 10.6 or up is considered 10.13 newer, but if you're older, the top stuff, but we're going to come down here. So this is the latest version of R, 4.0.2 and you want it for Mac operating system 10.13 or higher. And you'd click on this and it's going to download the PKG file and um, go through um, it, how you install packages for programs for Mac, which I'm not a pro at. So my executable window R version 4.0.2 for Windows EXE file is in my downloads folder. So I double click on it in Windows to start the installation process. Yes, you want it to do something. If you click no, it kicks you out and you don't get anything done. So yes, we want to let it change our computer. That's the whole point. We want to choose English. Now remember, defaults. Choose next on the license. Let it put it in the folder it wants so it can find it or else you'll have headaches. Um, let it check boxes. Accept the defaults. Leave it be. Uh, leave it be. I would not create an icon in the start menu. I would not create a desktop or a quick launch because we're never going to open R by itself. We're only going to run it through R Studio. So again, let everything be the default. Whatever it wants, let it be. You will save yourself a lot of headaches. Every time someone tries to click something, they end up having headaches. So it goes pretty fast. You can see that green line's already almost all the way moved over. And really, that's it. It's going to finish this green line, and it's going to be done. And then R will be installed on my computer. It won't look any different because I chose not to make any shortcuts or any quick links because I just want it to be in the brain of the computer, but I don't want to see it. Three, two, one, almost there. So R is the motor. We're just sticking it in the computer. Finished and ignore it. Now we're going to come back to our um, the encyclopedia, volume zero, setting up your computer. We got the computer language. Now we're going to get the cockpit, the steering wheel, the gauges, the way we're going to interact with R. So we need our studio. And it is ran by a company. Um, and we're going to look for the word download at the top. And it's going to shoot us to the download page. Scroll down until you find the R Studio desktop. Yes, we want the free version. 
we don't need a commercial license and we are not running a server that needs a com uh, commercial license. So download. And here it's noticed that I'm on a Windows machine, so it made me this big Windows button. But you can also click down below for Windows and all of these other operating systems I've never heard of. So I'm going to download for Windows. If you have a Mac, it'll probably notice that too, although I cannot confirm that. And quick as a lick, it has downloaded our Studio version 1.3.1073. But we're going to double click that to start its installation. Yes, we want to change our computer. And again, we're going to go almost 100% with the defaults. There's one exception if you're close. And if you, if you miss it, that's fine. I can show you how to fix it when we go through class Thursday. So let it go to the folder at once. Um, I like to have this on my start menu because our studio is a program that you're going to start. Um, and it says our studio. So just leave it there. And it goes about as fast as R, maybe a little slower. R downloaded more with the installer, I think. This one has to go get or maybe, anyway. It's pretty quick. You can show the details of all the programs and things it's doing to your computer. It's extracting a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I wish I hadn't looked at that because that just makes me the OCD. Like, ugh. it's a lot of things. But pretty quick. Um, for those of us old fogies who had to install SPSS from 12 CD-ROMs and take six hours, <laughs> this is nice. Computers have come a long way. <laughs> I'm a big fan. All right, and it's finished. Oh, so we didn't even have to do anything. Finished. The first two, I told you, they were quick. R and R Studio, pretty quick. Um, if I go to my menu, I now, let's see, all programs. I'm looking for R Studio. There's R and R Studio. So I'm going to go to R Studio. And I am going to um, pin it to my start menu because I like that. And there's, is there a pin to, you can make a new shortcut and put it out there, or you can just type it down here, R Studio. Oh, there it came up. I like to, right click on the icon at the bottom of my screen and pin it to my taskbar so it's always there. Um, it says, may we upload a crash report automatically? Sure. That's what our studio looks like. And we are going to deal with that later, not today. So I've unloaded, or I've installed R, our studio. Now comes the slow bugger. We are going to go <laughs> to LaTeX. Um, Tech, you don't officially need for R. You need LaTeX to convert your R Markdown notebook into a PDF, which is polished, professional, and easy to view on any um, electronic device. So um, directions for MacTech are here. You go to this website. It might take only five minutes, maybe a little bit more. You get a PKG file when you click MacTech download and just follow the instructions. It's basically about as complicated as those two we've done. It just might be a little slower. Windows users, it's a lot slower. So I'm going to go to the MIC Tech website. And it's important to pick the latest version of the net installer, not the basic. We've got to get the full version. The full version 64 bit is better. And I'm almost guaranteed most of your machines are 64 bit machines right now. Um, so you have to download it, which is a slow process, and then you have to run the installer after that. If the window asks you, this is very important, oh, um, allow the app for the unknown publisher to change your PC, say yes. Um, there is one point when it asks you if it needs a LaTeX package, whether you should, it should ask you always or just do it. The answer is just do it. So let's watch it. I'm going to go to the MicTech, and this is the MicTech, okay? It's very tempting uh, to just click download, but no, we need to go to the, oh, what did it look like? The 
all downloads. So let's go to all downloads. And there, from there, the net installer. Again, don't just click on the download here. This one will only give you the basic. You don't want the basic. Go to all downloads, then click on net installer. And this top, there's two net installers. One, the top one's for the 64-bit, and the bottom one's for the 32-bit. You want the 64-bit. Any machine made lately is going to be a 64-bit. And click download. This download, oh, well, the EXE is really fast. That's just to get it started. So I'm going to go into my downloads folder. And here we have the text. So these are the three pieces. And again, EXE is an executable executable. Double click on it to start it up. Um, accept it. You can't go anywhere until you do. Um, so you have to download it first and then you have to, to install it. So we're going to click download the MCTEC and I think connection settings you just don't click on that. So and go, go through this menu and then you have to go back to the EXE and double click on it a second time and then click the install and go through it again. The second time I think is faster. Um, it's already on this computer so I don't know if it's going to let me do this. So you don't want the basic again. You want the complete. And this is where you, oh, you have to choose a mirror. It's been a while since I did this. Um, oh, there's one in Utah. Perfect. And let it choose the folder it wants. Just let it go and start. This can be slow. So it's downloading a bunch of files. And so the top one is showing the downloading speed or completion, I believe. And the bottom one, which is like not at all green, is the overall progress. And it's, I mean, already look at how many files we're going through. It's getting a ton of files. So this is going to be slow. It's interesting to see how long it takes here at the university. Okay, it's 728. Let's see. 728. Mm, I'll pause it. I'll be back. Actually, it says that, I didn't notice it, it says that they already exist. So it's actually not downloading the files here. So I'm going to, well, I'll let it keep going. Yeah, I'll cancel it. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna, so say you went through it, it downloaded them all. So then you're gonna come back and do the executable the second time, yes, except the, this second time, you, so the first time you click the download and you go through downloading all the files and then you have to come back and click install and go through the install. Again, the complete version. Okay, here's the first decision point. Do you want to install for just you or everyone on the computer? I suggest everyone on the computer in case you get your password, something happens and you have to log in. Otherwise, it's just safer to do it that way. And let it choose the file at once. Choose what it wants. Okay, this is the point. This is the one thing you might want to change. Preferred paper, A4, I believe is European, United Kingdom. Don't quote me on that. You might want to change that to letter, but it's not a big deal if you don't. This is where you really, really want to change it. It says install missing packages on the fly. Say yes. By default it says ask me first and so it'll get hung up here if it's waiting to ask you when it's doing it under the hood you won't actually get the ask to come to the front. So you want to say yes to installing missing packages on the fly. It's the only thing that you want to be careful of. And then you click start and it's going to go through and install all of those files it just downloaded. I'm not going to do that because, again, I already have it on this computer. And that's it. That will do your three pieces of software that you need to get going for this class. So I'm going to go to the announcement I just sent after class today. So and I'm still waiting for the class recording to wrap, um, finish processing from Zoom. So the recording from class today from our Zoom call for the hour and a half is almost done processing. It's at 98%. As soon as it finishes, I'll upload that to YouTube and I will upload this video to YouTube. 
Um, I have a link to the PowerPoints that we went through in class about that I used on the workshop for introducing multi-level models. Um, there is the link that Christy, Christine found about our textbook for Hawks. So the Hawks textbook for free on the website from USU since you're a paying student. I can't find a free version of the APA 7th edition. If you can find it, let me know and I'll share it with everybody else so that we have it. So before class on Thursday the 3rd, um, introduce yourself. I think almost everyone has now. I said 12, so maybe one more. Probably done now. Email me if there's any time on the schedule that conflicts with anything you already know about. If you have any other general or specific questions about the class, um, go through what I just did here in this video for the installing R, our studio and tech. Here's a link to the directions and I will um, send out a new announcement with the YouTube link when it goes up. Of course, that's how you will get this recording. Anyway, and then when you do finish, um, it, oh, if you have R in our studio and LaTeX already on your machine, don't redo LaTeX. LaTeX never changes really, like ever enough to matter. So don't reinstall tech. But do update R in our studio, either by going through the same process I just showed, or you can go to this link and it will give update directions. It's kind of important. I usually update my R in our studio and my packages at the start of each semester. Um, every once a year might be okay if you only use it periodically. Um, two or three times a year has been plenty for me. You don't have to worry about it that much. Um, in fact, if you're not having issues, you can just wait until you have an issue if you want. So there is a post on the discussion board for how your installation process went. Was it really smooth? What got hung up? How are you feeling about it? On Thursday, next time we get together, we will install packages in R, which are like apps R for your cell phone. We'll get oriented with R in our studio, the flow of working in a notebook, and we'll actually work on homework zero, and we will get you to hopefully finish homework zero in class next Thursday so that you can go from starting a new R notebook all the way to knitting the PDF and handing it in. And so there's not a lot inside of this homework zero. It's just to make sure that your computer can go through the whole process and that everything's installed correctly. So that next week when we start on single level regression and then move into multi-level regression, you're ready to go and none of that's going to get you stumbled. Um, so there is a homework zero and files in Canvas right now, but don't start them. I'm going to update it a little bit, so don't start it yet. It'll be tempting, but save that for class Thursday. If you do have time, because it's the first of the semester and things are kind of slow, maybe, um, if you want to get ahead, you can read chapter one of the Hawks book, and I have linked it here. And then I've also linked the scanning of the Finch Chapter 1 and Hoffman Chapter 1. Those are both reviewing simple linear regression. If you have another textbook that you did multiple linear regression in, this is a really great one that I like. If you have any other book that um, reviews um, regression, that's fine. You know, just review regression so that next week um, kind of polished up whatever textbook you have but those are some good resources and if you finish your reading then you can go ahead and post um, directions are there on the link um, for week two about your experience or your feelings or your questions um, about regression so that that's only if you want to work ahead because I know some people are go-getters but Again, the minimum things you need to do before class are introduce yourself, email me if you have needs, install those three things, and post about the installation process. And we'll see you Thursday.